It's that time of year when Roy has got his eagles fighting fit. When he's not out after blue hares in Scotland, he's in the stubble looking for the brown ones. We're at Kingsclear in Hampshire and we're not alone. There's another film crew following Mr Lupton, so we're having to play second fiddle, but hopefully it won't disrupt the action. Roy's friend Ian has come to lend a hand. He has more experience with gosses, but is happy to help slip the birds if needs be. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, so Roy has filled up his Arga cat. Hopefully Atos has had a good night's sleep. Roy works the field and we get a couple of hairs up, but they're either behind us or not right for his Goldie baby. Roy keeps sweeping the field and we change position, staying high. Then another hair breaks from his seat. Ian yeah. slips baby. It's a great flight and the hare has a lucky escape. The eagle's turn of speed just before the strike is incredible. With Baby, he's quite an experienced eagle on brown hares um, and, and on blue hares as well because he flies a lot in the mountains. And when he knows that he's got the height advantage where he's, because he was coming down from the, the top of the hill there, and what he'll be doing is he'll be coming in and just getting his timing right. So he flips out to the side normally and then comes in and cuts into the hair. Because if they just try and, if an, a young eagle or an inexperienced eagle will just go flying straight into it um, and the hare can see it coming all the way and, and he's just waiting and anticipating the move. Whereas what Baby does is he bides his time, comes in and then at the last minute just catapults himself round and, and flicks in for the, uh, for the take. And uh, that's, what he, that's one of the, the moves that he, he specialises in and uh, normally does quite well with those, but not on that occasion. Time to hit the road and make our way over to another field. Atos shows he's as good pounding the streets as he is cross-country. Roy covers the bottom of the valley and we walk to the top, but no luck this time. The estate works hard to promote hares, which benefits plenty of other wildlife. They're leaving the stubbles for longer if they can and the stubble slightly longer as well so it's, it's allowing more he more cover for the hares and, uh, and that allows them to come through but it's, it's not just the hares that benefit there's all the ground nesting birds that benefit as well because obviously with um, sufficient predator, predator control so if you're keeping the foxes at bay and a lot of the corvid species the magpies and the crows and whatever else then all of the ground nesting birds benefit as well so you've got the partridges um, lapwings and then you've got obviously um, skylarks as well so when you're going across there there's huge amounts of skylarks um, you know that are there and that's just because of just slight changes in, in management with the, with the farm. Time to play for the cameras and Roy and Ian put the eagles through their paces. First flying from glove to glove and then after a lure behind the cat. The roe deer skin certainly gets this young bird moving. The prime aspect with all of it is ensuring that they've, they've got the muscle capability um, and the, the, the aerobic fitness as well to keep up with everything, so, uh, or to keep on top of the game. With the photo session over, it's time to have another bash at these hares. On the last drive, eagle-eyed Ian spots a hare holding fast. Roy positions everyone and Ian sets the hare racing across the field. Once again it's close but not close enough, and another hare is given a chance to tear off to cover. The hares may not be plentiful, but they've beaten the eagles today.